it's Mike with Utastic. I'm standing here with Evan Phoenix, who is a, is a director with the Ruby Central, and he's an organizer with the RubyConf and the RailsConf that we're at today. I, you might also know a little bit of his work inside of the Ruby community. He's a, one of the few people that can say they've actually created a Ruby. <laughs> uh, he created the Rubinius framework, uh, virtual machine, and, and the Puma web server, and probably countless other things I can't even <laughs> think of, but those are pretty big things. <laughs> Well, but let's start with the, the conference that yeah, we're at today. Absolutely. Well, first, thank you for taking the time to speak. Sure, my pleasure. Um, so, RailsConf. Yeah. Uh, how did you get involved in uh, in organizing? Sure. Yeah. So, I'm a director of, the, of Ruby Central now, and um, I got I got involved by basically being asked to do it by a pre the previous directors by uh, who were Chad Fowler, Rich Kelmer, and David Black. So they 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 asked me if I'd be interested in being a director. Um, they had they had done it since the beginning. So uh, since uh, I want to say 2004, and um, they had decided like, well, you know, like it'd be nice to have some new people come in, mm -hmm. and so um, yeah, so I said, oh, it'd be great. I was actually working on, um, I was helping them, helping them out with Ruby Gem stuff at the time, okay. and so they had said, okay, well, that you obviously care about this stuff. Do you want to be more involved? And I said, sure. So uh, yeah, so that kind of brought me in, made me a, a director, and then um, quickly I realized that oh, okay, we run these conferences now too. Right. So. Um, yeah, so it's uh, that's that's kind of how I got involved. Um, I was sort of recruited in, if right. you will. Uh, yeah. So, so I mean, you obviously to have that level of trust, you were already very active in the community at that point. Pretty active, yeah. Yeah. Um, were you were you mostly working in open source, or were you like volunteering at conferences? Um, it was mostly in open source. Okay. Um, you know, I've I had certainly been to a lot of conferences. Mm -hmm. I've been to um, plenty of Ruby conferences and Rails conferences and regional conferences and international ones at that. Point. Point. Um, not helping out a ton, um, mostly because I ended up speaking at a lot of the conferences, so I didn't really want, I wouldn't have that be my focus, right. not, you know, what I do now, which is the running day. around and making sure yeah. that the conference is actually going well. Do you have coffee? Yeah, do you have <laughs> co exactly. Is there enough coffee? Uh, I know the internet's down. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's exactly right. Oh, let me look at it again. Yeah, okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, so I hadn't really been involved in the actual um, that volunteering and that kind of stuff, but right. I certainly helped out. So you know, uh, the uh, the Ruby conferences are you know very much a community affair. So um, I, you know, I'd been at I, you know those guys are my friends, and they'd been working on Ruby conferences, and so occasionally I would like, oh, what do you need help doing? And I would help out, just doing right. whatever. So I was fairly. I was aware of the logistics. Right. You know, it wasn't a totally um, closed idea to me. I knew, okay, there's this and there's that and that kind of stuff. So. When you moved from being uh, kind of in the code or, or just kind of helping maybe set up and things mm -hmm. like that, how, and then being thrust into an organization. Yeah. Huh? Right. Well, I mean, how much of a shock was that to your system? I, it wasn't too bad. I mean, I think that, you know, it, we kind of, uh, we did a little bit at a time. I think that the first big one, the first thing that we were like, okay, wow, was um, the 2011 RailsConf. Um, it was the first one that O'Reilly was no longer a partner with Ruby Central on it. And um, we, I, we kind of like, you know, I, I, I wasn't really aware of the, of, I didn't, this is, that was my first time doing that conference, and so there was a lot of things that we were like, oh my gosh, we have no signage, and right. it's two weeks before the conference, so, so we were like, quick, do a bunch of signs, and right. oh, we need a t-shirt real fast, do a bunch of t-shirts, you right. know. Um, so that was a little, it's, it, 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 there's these times where it gets very hectic, um, and we've actually gotten a lot better with managing that mm -hmm. kind of stuff now, uh, but it, it, it wasn't a huge shock, um, you know, it, it's, you know, managing um, expectations is sort of what making a conference is all about. And right. uh, honestly, having an open source project is a lot about managing other your users' expectations right. and that kind of thing. So it's not totally dissimilar. Yeah. <laughs> well, has it changed your perspective of running uh, and organizing? Has it really changed? If you go to other conferences, is it, do you look at them a little differently? Or oh yeah, uh, it you. Uh, uh, one thing that we, the organizers that we were talking about is whether or not we feel like the conference has gone well, right? Mm -hmm. That's a 
think we're constantly asking ourselves and asking each other, you know, are things going okay, that kind of stuff. And it's funny, we can't, our opinion is actually really bad uh, on whether or not it's going well because yeah. we only see the warts. We only see the stuff that doesn't work because that's the stuff that gets brought to our attention. The stuff that does work really well, people are like, oh, that was great. They don't, we don't really hear about that kind of stuff. So we actually have to like go ask people's opinions. How's the conference going? Right. Um, I think that, uh, so now when I go to other conferences and I see what's going on, I'm much more attuned to like, okay, they're having a problem. I can tell the way yeah. that they're acting. Oh, there's a problem over here. And I'm glad I don't have to deal with it, but I can tell that like, yeah. kind of stuff You feel occurs. a little bit of sympathy. Or right. Exactly. That's exactly right. Yeah. 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 And, uh, and the, the other thing is, is, um, like in a FOSS project mm-hmm. where you're you're working, you've got the people complaining, mm-hmm. and those probably are the ones that are most in your face. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're working on a, a project that's it's very very visible, mm-hmm. and then every time somebody gets frustrated, they're like, "I'm not." F- yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this, this thing doesn't work at all. Yeah, 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 yeah. and uh, uh, so. You, you might feel a little bit more, you know, working in open source. You've maybe developed a little thicker skin. Oh, sure, I'm sure, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so you're able to look at it a little bit more in context. Yeah, it doesn't really get, you know, when people say like, "Oh, this doesn't work" or whatever, it doesn't, it doesn't get to me. I mean, like, I'm interested. I want to know, like, I want because I want them to be happy, and I want to know why it doesn't work. Like, what's the, exactly the circumstances? But um, over time, I've. I, I, I've allowed myself to not to for my emotional state right. to not be a reflection of those other those other people's emotional right. state. So that when they're mad, it doesn't make me mad. I just go like, okay, I understand that that's the problem. You know, we got to help them right. fix it, but I don't get all riled up about it. Well, and like even I, t- I chatted with uh, DHH and Aaron Patterson about knowing that you have a project that people might be staking their career, you know, not careers on. No, absolutely, day to day job. Yeah. Um, you know how does that? Because um, we've kind of segued here. That's, a, that's fine. Um, yeah. uh, the uh, you know how, knowing that you you've created something that many people are you know paying their bills with and, and doing oh, yeah. their work, and then does that ever uh, weigh on you, or does it or is that? Um, it, it doesn't. I don't think it doesn't really weigh on me. I think that more it's exciting for yeah. me more than anything else. That you know, like we have a because I think that I think if. If people didn't set tell, weren't so adamant in telling us that they felt like the conferences were going well, mm-hmm. I think it would weigh on me a lot more. But I think that the fact that people feel people come up and tell us that the conferences is going well, that there's all these great talks and that kind of thing, and I had somebody somebody tell Marty, who's one of the directors, say like, uh, "You need to pick not such great tracks and put them all together at the same time because I can't figure out which talks to go to." <laughs> yeah, that's um, like the good problem, right? Yeah. When we hear that, you know that that kind of means you know there's gonna, always going to be problems, but when we hear that from a lot of people, um, the way of knowing that, like, you know, we have a, a duty, if you will, um, is it, it's invig- it's an energizing, it's invigorating more than it's a burden because we know that, like, you know, we can help we can help make the community better and keep it at a certain size and keep it going, and um, that will make that will allow other companies to to do more Rails projects, and the people at our at our conferences will get those jobs, and you know. So I think it's it's more like uh, we're happy that it's that it's going as well as it is. And you know, thinking about people who are, who are critical, you know, sometimes they're the, the loudest. Mm-hmm. Well, usually, <laughs> almost always, the critical ones are the most loud. Mm-hmm. Um, and I just, you know, again, moving towards the uh, open source stuff. Yeah. Because you're in a unique position to have something that some people view. You actually have two products that people might look as competitive. Sure. So Rubini is competitive to JRuby, competitive to MRI. Sure. Um, Puma competitive to uh, uh, Unicorn. Mm-hmm. Well, that's the big one. Thin. Sure. You know, but sure. Um, in. So that's a unique perspective that mm-hmm. I'd like to ask about. Is yeah, you know, how do you feel about looking at J Ruby and and MRI? Sure. Yeah, I think that it's funny. Um, this, they're you know, working in Providence for as long as I have. That was a big question, or um, that's always been a big question. You know, like, are you got? Do you guys fight a lot? You know, yeah, like, yeah. Uh, do you, are you mean to each other? And I think that um, within uh, the Rubinius, J Ruby, like all of the Ruby implementations, yeah. even the ones that are much smaller, the Rubinius isn't huge, but even the ones that are much smaller, um, those uh, all of those, uh, everybody is very, we're all like comrades. 
comrades. We're all very, we're all friends. We all talk about what's going on because we all have different things to bring to the table. We're not building exactly the same thing. Um, and so that allows us to, excuse me, um, uh, that allows us to sort of be friends, talk about solutions. Right. How, oh, how are you solving this other thing? Yeah. And the other thing is that uh, it's good that we're friends because it would be kind of lonely otherwise. Right? right. There's not a lot of people doing that work. You really want to have somebody else to talk to. And so, speak to that yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly what you're talking about. Right. And so if it, if we were, you know, if we if we weren't friends, if everything was like a, a constant butting of heads, then it would be yeah, it would be this very isolating thing. But because they're all sort of uh, yeah, like I said, we're all friends. So that makes it better. So when people, is it, is it ever like, uh, you just want people to stop doing these comparisons or, or do you think no. that there is another valid, like, so that way people can weigh their situation? Yeah, I think if the people stop doing the comparisons, then there's probably not uh, option. That probably means there's only one thing, right? right? Um, and so the, you want the comparisons because it means that people are looking at them and they're saying, like, oh, okay, well, should I choose this one or should I choose this one? And what does this give me that that doesn't give me? What are the trade-offs? And I think that you're always going to have the comparison. You want the comparison. I mean, you know, there's a million different cars out there and that's all people do is compare cars. Uh, which car should I get? That kind of thing. Right, right. And you want that. All the car companies want comparisons because it means that um, they're they're looking at their, their other, you know, it means that there's sort of a... a um, a healthy ecosystem of choice for right. those things, and, and and that you can figure out how to compete on features. Absolutely, yeah. You want and you want to compete on the things that matter for the users. You don't want to compete on like uh, oh, or sabotages of the project. Right. You want to your you know, your users say, okay, well, we really love something like this, and you say, like, okay, well, I'll, I'll go add that for you or whatever it might be. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's where you want to compete. You want to say like, okay, we're giving people what they want, and that's you know who can give that the best or the version of it that that. Uh, you know, some some set of users want the most, or whatever. So, so you know, and and again, because I, the the conferences are fascinating, but mm -hmm. the reason I, I'm so excited to talk about Rubinius is that. We hear about Ruby, and, that, and that's that's sure. And, and and it is Ruby. So yeah. I, I also just want to also understand about how you uh, your path to creating a VM. Sure. Not not just the Ruby specific one, but was that your first implementation of something like this? Or? Um. Well, okay. So Rubyus is actually on its. Um, Currently, two sort of virtual machines because it's got a JIT in addition to the normal virtual machine, but it's the, really the third code base for the same project. Okay. So um, the first two, the first one. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll go back to the beginning. So I got involved with doing it because I was always liked uh, like languages and virtual machines. I thought that was a very interesting part in computing um, uh, because it's like this building block. If you can make it really good, if you can make it really sound and interesting, then you can build anything on top of it, right? And so um, I started off, I was just kind of interested in it, and a friend of mine, Ryan Davis, uh, said suggested that I get the Smalltalk Blue Book, which is this sort of canonical book uh, that the second half of it is just a reference for how to build a Smalltalk virtual machine. Oh, okay. And it was... They, it, it was a reference for a machine that they never built. Someone actually has translated it. Squeak was actually a translation of that thing originally. Oh. But it was just it was, like it, was, it, was, spec. it was for documentation. It was like, okay, well, this is how you do this. And but all the documentation that's, was. That's so funny to be like, it's it's a documentation of something that you're saying that doesn't exist. Yeah, they never they never use the code that's in yeah. there. In fact, there's all these there's all these typos in it. Oh, really? In the in the code itself, uh, which is fine, you know. Uh, but it's all written in Smalltalk as well. So they they didn't have Smalltalk to write to run this thing because they wrote it in Smalltalk. So, of course, it was just for documentation. So, um, so I got that, and I was like, okay, it's so easy. Like I can read the thing, and I can like, okay, this is what. I'm this is what the bytecode looks like. This is how you yeah. dispatch the bytecode. This is how, when you call a method, what would you do? So I really just translated just the blue book into uh, my own virtual machine. I wrote all in Ruby. So it's the first version of Rubinius. It's actually the first 50 commits or something in the Git repository. You can go back and look at it. It's the implementation all, of the small talk VM. Yeah. It, well, it was for Ruby, but it was for Ruby. Okay. It, was, it was basically the, the techniques, the exact ideas that were in the small talk book for Ruby. Uh, but it didn't run very much. I mean, it was like, it had its own. Um, it 
it, it did have a very simple garbage collector. It had a, a bytecode virtual machine. It was super, super slow because obviously I was writing it in Ruby and just running it uh, on 182, I think was the Ruby at the time. Um, so I did that, and then I um, I was just very interesting, and then I got accepted to talk about it at um, RubyConf Denver 2006. No. Yeah, 2006 or 2007, I can't, I can't remember. Um, anyway, so, and I realized that I couldn't present this thing that was just all Ruby and super, super slow. People were going to be like, oh, this is very cool. How can I use it? And I'd be like, you can't use it at all. I suggest you never use this thing. <laughs> that would be really kind of a bummer. So I translated it into C, just okay. like hand translated it, read the Ruby, wrote the C, read the Ruby, wrote the C. Um, and so that was the first version of, of Rubinius that was, um, that you could sort of general, that you could sort of use. It was still pretty slow. Um, and we kind of built up uh, techniques and we did all kinds of stuff on top of it um, until about 2008. Okay. Nine, and when we translated into C plus plus, we changed a bunch of things when we did that. So that's kind of so it's it's been it was Ruby and Ruby and then Ruby and C and then Ruby and C plus plus. Right. Okay. So it's in, so what's next? For closure? I don't. Know. I don't know. Not. Uh, yeah, I have no idea. Uh, yes. Ada. APL. Yeah. I don't yeah. know. Uh, oh, an APL version. That'd be fun. No. It's one long line. Yeah. Um, okay. So you, you're you're obviously you know very passionate about creating these, these uh, concurrent, I mean, a, a multi-threaded uh, VM, yeah. uh, and, and you know, people always are looking at Ruby and say, well, it's got the GI, well, the, the global, global interpreter lock, yeah. um, and uh, you know, that you have to have four processes, but mm-hmm. look at JRuby and Rubinius. Yeah. And so now you're, you know, you're actually, in a way, going head-to-head with Java. Yeah, absolutely. 100%. <laughs> you know, which, absolutely. Which is, you know, that's... Uh, Scary. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 If you start crying, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I appreciate that, you know, because I mean it, it's a huge mega corporation. Yeah. But um, so you know, it, it's pretty obvious that you're, you're passionate about creating performance uh, uh, um, tools that we can mm-hmm. use to to write, run code on. In 2014, if I'm looking at Rubinius, can I look and say, yeah, I, I should maybe look at this and try to see what I can do with it, maybe look at my production systems and Absolutely. benefit? Absolutely. I mean, I think that there are still places that it's slower um, than, than even MRI. There's a lot of Rails code that does things that kind of confuse the, 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 the JIT compiler. Um, but... Uh, I, we have we have users that use Rubinius for very specific workloads because uh, they control enough of it that they can basically make it. They, their Ruby code can run extremely fast inside Rubinius. We have okay. like high frequency traders or people who run workers with just like the background workers. A lot of times people run background workers with Rubinius that aren't running inside Rails mm-hmm. and they're doing something that's like okay, well I'm going to go off and do the, with this big calculation whatever I want to do. I do that in Rubinius and it's super fast. And again, they sort of like kind of get the best to both worlds in that yeah. way. And that, because it's funny you mentioned that, because we can actually, it might come as a surprise, but we can actually run other stuff on Ruby, not just Rails. Right, right, exactly. <laughs> I know it's, it's exactly crazy. right. Yeah. But yeah, no, I, I, you did say something, though, that I want to hook on to. Sure. With, I asked this question to DHH earlier about, um, you know, because he is openly critical of certain companies sure. that, you know, just so happen to use Rails okay. and make a lot of money with it. And then you mentioned the high fr- frequency traders, which mm-hmm. are a controversial group. Sure, sure. Um, you know, I, I don't know what your feelings are regarding high frequency trading, mm-hmm. but knowing that your tools are getting used to basically buy people's islands. <laughs> um, sure. But they're not necessarily giving anything back. Okay. Um, you know what? What are your thoughts uh, regarding? Yeah, I mean, I think that you know, going in when I was when I started writing a VM, um, I thought about this actually. I was like, okay, I'm going to write if I really want to do this, um, and but this is true for almost any job. Mm-hmm. This is not just true for a Ruby implementation. But some you give away, and you don't. Yeah, absolutely. At least yeah. for a job, I've got a paycheck. Yeah. Yes. Uh, it. it um, I think that you you go into it saying that like you know the if my license is such a way that I want I want people to use this independent of whether or not I agree with the way that they're using it mm-hmm. you have to kind of like sort of you know divorce yourself. To, yeah kind of check that at the door right. you have to say like look uh, 
there's always going to be those people who are going to do something with it that you don't that you would not do with it, right? That doesn't mean that your thing is not good and that you shouldn't not do that because oh, someone might use it in a bad way. It's not a nuclear weapon. It's not nu- yeah. you know that kind of thing. It's just some software. If you don't do it, somebody else will do it. It's not like this this vacuum of software out there. So um, I think that I, I've kind of come to the, the 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 conclusion that it doesn't. I, I can't. I have no control over that, right? I have no control over what how people are going to use it, what they're going to use it for, whether or not I agree with what they use it for, and so um, I can't really allow myself to worry about that. Yeah. That's just like that's the world that's going to happen. That's how it goes. And, and just a funny anecdote is I, I, I had a uh, friend, um, I have a friend who was listening to a Senate uh, judiciary hearing mm-hmm. against some com- for a company he worked with, uh, <laughs> and they were having to explain their algorithm, and he's sitting there watching, and he's with his daughter, and he says... Daddy wrote that. <laughs> uh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, yeah. And, he, and he's listening to these people talk about this anti-monopoly. You know, I, I don't, yeah. I don't, I'm not going to say who or yeah, what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's um, amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, that's super interesting. And, and uh, but you know, hearing about, you know, like I said, DHH complaining or, or comment commenting on certain companies, and mm-hmm. you mentioned the high frequency trading. It's sure. like this stuff can get used in ways that maybe aren't anticipated, right. but. You kind of just have to let it. Go. Yeah, I mean, I think for me, I think the way that I, the the way that I come to terms with it is just to think that um, if uh, if I'm making my users happy, whatever they do with it is sort of that's fine. Whatever, I again, I can't control that. I just, but I still want to. I still am beholden. I, I I hold myself beholden to the users who want this thing. You know, so I'm going to use it too. I'm a user as well. But those people's opinions matter as well. So I want to. If they're happy with what's going on, then that then I'm fine with it, and I have to just sort of end there. I can't right. get into the deeper. Oh, what, but what are they actually doing with it? I can't. I can't do that. So right, and you know, just coming back to the conference, mm-hmm. uh, you know, 2014 is wrapping up. I mean, or not 2014 in general, but <laughs> the RailsConf 2014 is wrapping up yep. today. Are there already plans for what's next, or since well, yeah. Chicago, you go all over? Yeah, so we've got we've got RubyConf in November coming up. That's in San Diego. Okay, and then we have RailsConf 2015, which we're going to announce the location for um, at the the keynote this afternoon. Great, and then uh, yeah, we're good. So it's live in wallets. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, we're we're going. Everything's good. You know, um, I think that people have asked us, you know, like, oh, could the conference be bigger? Is the conference growing okay? And you know, we sell out the we sell out both conferences every year. You know, RailsConf only sells out a couple weeks before the conference actually starts, but that actually tells us that we're probably exactly the right size. Okay. Because um, if we weren't selling, if we weren't selling out, we'd know that we're probably buying. You know, yeah, we're too it's big. A little, little too big. If we sold out too early, maybe we're a little too small. But we're kind of where we are, we're kind of in this sweet spot, I think. Um, and you know, we have a lot of new people at uh, at this year's RailsConf, which is super super important. We know that the community is healthy. We know that there's new people coming in. Um, you know, at some point. I've told this to other people. At, um, at some point, there will be a decline. I don't know when that's going to occur. I don't know what it looks like. But I know that having new people come in, be it in the community, be at the conferences, uh, will delay that decline. You yeah, know, all the time. So, so it, it might come someday, but it's well. Eventually, there's going to be the heat death of the universe. Right. But <laughs> not, not not this year. <laughs> but not this year. <laughs> right. All right. Well, thank you very much. Absolutely, for my Thanks pleasure. Appreciate it. Sure. User groups with lots to say, interviews and more. No way. Sharing great ideas in the tech community. Fascinating conversations, a plethora of information. Find out for yourself today at ugtastic.com.